Hey, um, good morning. <clears throat> I'm showing you a video for lesson 14.3. 14.3 um, and 14.4 are some of the more difficult lessons you're going to face this year. So I'm going to be giving you an abbreviated version of what you can do with it. Okay, so um, for number one, which is located on page 332, I wrote down the tally chart and a number line, okay? So you're gonna be marking these th these uh, numbers on a line plot. So I'm gonna pause here for a minute and go through some steps. Okay, so if we were in class, um, I would be having us all using graph paper and we'd be marking all these fractional parts perfectly. But you'll see between each number, I put three um, lines. This is gonna represent fourths. So if you're looking at three, this would be three and a fourth, three and two fourths or three and a half, three and three fourths and four, okay? So think of those as fractional parts. You do three lines to make things into fourths between whole numbers. Okay, so what I did with this line plot is I put X's where all the tallies are. So three and a half gets two tallies. I mark that above that fractional part. Um, for five and a fourth, I put three above five, what would be five and a fourth. Directly above seven, because seven's a whole number, I put four marks. And then between eight and what would have been eight and a fourth, I put an X just between the line. So when you look at the answer key that I sent your parents, you'll notice you just put an X between eight and the whole number. That's going to be where eight and an eighth is going to be. So the key is you're going to need to put these line plots uh, in the right spot in the correct order. So as I did that right there, you'll see how I put those X's on the line plot. Okay, so number two of guided practice is a really easy problem. How many pumpkins are in the crate? You're just going to add up all the numbers. So you do 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. It's going to be a total of 10 pumpkins in the crate. All right, I'm going to pause and show another problem. Okay, something that's going to pop up is the range of pumpkins. So if we look at the pumpkins, the smallest size um, is three and a half pounds, and the maximum size is eight and one eighth pounds. So to find the range, you find the maximum and the minimum. So you have eight and a half pounds and three and a half pounds. So when you find the range, it's something that we haven't done for a while you're actually gonna be subtracting the smallest number from the largest number. So I went ahead and did a little bit of the review math. Um, you have eight and an eighth minus three and a half. So then you have eight and one eighth minus three and a fourth. So then you, what you have to do is you have to find um, common, or we have a common denominator here, but you can't do one eighth minus four eighths. So you cross out the eight, make it a seven, add eight over eight like we did before. Oops. And when you do that, you're going to get a total of the range is four and five eighths pounds. So the pumpkins are about four pounds apart. That's what the range means if that pops up. Okay, I'm jumping up to number five now on independent practice. I'm going to give you the scaled down version of how to do these. Um, so what I did is um, I wrote down all the data that you have for number five. You have 11 and a fourth, 12 and a half, 11 and a fourth, 14 and an eighth, and 10 and a half, 11 and a fourth, and 12. So you figure out the smallest whole number, which is 10, and the largest whole number, which is 14 and an eighth. So I went to 15. Now, what I did is I marked fourths between all of those. Now, I know one of those is an eighth, but we'll just put that between where it goes. So now I have all of my markings from 10 to 15 with fourths marked on the number line. Now, I'm getting a little low on time on the video, but I marked down 11 and a fourth on the number line with an X and 12 and a half with an X on the number line. Okay, so I went ahead through the rest of the data and I marked where all those numbers go. So you mark one at a time and cross them off, and that's how you create your line plot. Okay, and I also made a tiny little frequency table over here, which you can go off of. So this is how you make line plots, do the best you can. Um, I know we don't have graph paper, but uh, just create number lines and put those spots. Good luck with this lesson.